Okay, hello everybody and welcome to War Jeepney. And today we will be talking about some games from Privateer Press, namely Warcaster. This is John, and I'm known as the Terror. And with me, I have uh, from Canada, I have Ayo Sopanko. It's the madness of. All right. We have uh, Jay Estaris. We have uh, Jam, Jam, Jam. <laughs> jam, Jam. Jam, Jam. Jam, Jam. We have the pair of uh, Carlo and Joyce. Only, only me right now. <laughs> I believe you guys are, are coming in from the outside. and From the outside. <laughs> from this infection process before they mm -hmm. get inside their home. And we also have here two sponsors uh, for uh, 3D painting. We have uh, Erwin Espiritu. <laughs> and we have... Uh, the creator of Paint the Gun, we have R1 or Rainier, and he also has a, a new business right now. Uh, something to do with <laughs> <laughs> but cheeks, but cheeks, that's right. Okay, but cheeks, yum. Hey, 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 what's up? All right, so we're yeah, all I... now at, the, at the Philippines, and we have Ayo coming from, from Canada. So, what time is it there, Ayo? Um, 9 41 in the evening. Okay, so I hope you're prepared because we'll probably. Probably be done by I don't know one a.m. At, at <laughs> and then you have to edit. <laughs> yeah. you have to edit. Immediately, <laughs> you have to edit immediately. So yeah, my first question, John, is why private press? We know that the madness of Ayo Sopango hates <laughs> private press. <laughs> why are we talking about private press today? Well, actually. Privateer Press also sort of let me down. I don't know what to say. <laughs> the same way weird. The same way weird games let you the down. Games let me down, killing off. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and New episode, yeah. For our weird games. <laughs> changing my uh the, what my caster does. But uh <laughs> we have new games coming in. And we're not all into it. Some of us might be on the fence. Some of us might be thinking about it. Some of us already got into it. And it's a good opportunity for us to, to share our insights of the game, share some details, and hopefully maybe convince others uh, to also start the game. Let's get on start. You want to start off with what, Riot? I know. Uh, Warcaster first? Warcaster, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Now my interest here, John, is I need to be convinced to purchase Warcaster. I'm still on the fence right now. It, I, I, I'll give my thoughts about it, and maybe you can convince me to take the plunge. But um, I'll listen to your arguments. First. Oh, 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 you will, you will take the plunge. <laughs> uh, I think Jay, it's a bad idea, Jay. Don't get into it. <laughs> okay, so just. Allow me to present here. Well, the good thing about it, while, while John's pulling that up, is at least in the Philippines, I know that a lot of the War Machine Hordes players, um, which is probably like the second largest. Um, no, no, we're supposed to... Yep, we see yeah, you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, welcome to Warcaster. I actually stumbled uh, into Warcaster by accident because. I was looking for something new to, to get into, something exciting for Christmas because Christmas always has, we always have to have something new. So I, I was searching Facebook and I saw that uh, Gears and Games uh, had this and I watched a, uh, a quick battle report on YouTube and I said, you know, what is something I can look into. Does the, the, the I like the look, the, that sort of cyber cyberpunk look into it. So, okay, so with Warcaster, here are some aspects that I found out about the game. So one, it is a skirmish force. It's not really a squad-based game like, like Infinity, where you're controlling a squad. And it's not really a full-blown force, let's say, like Warhammer. So it's a skirmish uh, force. And the army composition is not in points. It is in the number of, of units you have. So it's kind of like Magic the Gathering. And you just play 60 mm. card decks, and whatever is there in the deck, it's up to the player. So he can bring uh, big, uh, high to cast stuff, but he has to manage that, or the other side can have weenies. So it's uh, the army composition is different here. Though the units do have deployment cost because you have to bring them in, in play. 
So another thing that is in this game that I don't think I have in my any other game or any other game that I own is the summoning aspect and the bringing out of the void gates. So you only start with five points of your list <clears throat> on the table. And that would normally be probably two units and a solo or a couple of solos and a jack. And then you have to make them go around the board and then they bring out void gates. And through those void gates, you get to bring out your other units. So this is almost anywhere on the table, including your opponent's deployment zone, if you can get uh, someone there. So you'll really be using, I guess, much of the table. Another thing about this game, it has two play modes, one for four by four and one for 30 by 30. And of course, by standards, any game that can reduce the table, sp uh, table space is good. Because it allows you to play, it allows you to play on small tables. Everyone has four by four uh, in their houses. So even in tournament play, the thirty by thirty is part of the the system. Meaning, if we play a full tournament, we some games have to be played with your smaller skirmish force in a thirty by thirty. So it's not all uh, four by four table. So the game has this arc management into it, and for those that play. War Machine, that would be like Focus, except mm -hmm. that everyone has seven, and you can only put one down a turn. Okay, so it's not Seven like, per player? Seven, seven per, player. per player. Per player. Yeah, and, and it's not like you can, okay, put all three arc on this jack. It, you can't do it. You have to do it one by one. Of course, there are other mechanics or other abilities of the factions that allow you to, to mitigate that, but you have to manage the seven. And with the seven, you can do the following things. You either put it down on a unit to enhance the, the abilities of that unit, but you also need it to, to bring down a gate because that is like the casting cost. So if, if you put all your arc down on your units, then you won't have anything to summon to bring out. Okay. Now, another thing you use the arc for is to uh, enhance your, well, what you call here are the ciphers or the spells. Okay, so we have uh, cards here, and it uses sort of blast spells. And the more arc you have on your pool, in other words, on you, then that's more dice for you to roll to hit. So you have to play okay. around. With, what's, uh, what's the dice, by the way? D6 or D12? No, uh, these are Monk. Monk uh, symbol dice. dice. So, yeah, so you have symbol dices. D6 yeah. symbol dice, correct? D6 symbol dice, wherein you have the normal dice is three blanks, two hits. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the one double hit, so that 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 would be like the six or so the critical hit. That's the white. That's the white. Yeah. That's the white one. There's also red dice, wherein I think you only have one miss. The rest are hits, and then you have the critical hit. So if you, you have, have doubles card, and triples, actually, in the red, right? You have double uh, hits for, and triples. For warcaster, I don't know about monpok, but for warcaster, just doubles. Uh, doubles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. It's the same. It's the same. It's just doubles. So you can play and then do you have blue? Do you have blue? No, no, there's no, no. Ah, okay. just white and, and red. Okay. Yeah, so these are the, the things. And when, when you put an arc down, you have to think of how to cycle it because you don't want it stuck on your unit. Because if it's stuck on your unit and you're not using that unit, then you're depriving yourself from some arc. So that's mm -hmm. part of the game to sort of how to manage and how to cycle that arc in and out. Now as I mentioned, it uses a card mechanic, so you, you have a deck of 12 to 15. Uh, right now, I believe the starter comes with 24, where wow. you choose 12. And then the next big starter collision course is coming out with another 24 cards. So that's a lot of cards for you to play with. There are four kinds of cards, and you have to have three of each in your deck. So that would normally be, uh, uh, if, if you want a streamlined deck, a 12-card deck, wherein you have uh, three of each card. And one of that is the blaster. We call those furies. Those are the like the fireball in, in Magic the Gathering. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing that I really also like about this game is the jack, uh, their ability to customize your jack. And I don't know who here is good in statistics, but one <laughs> jack can have uh, four cortexes or four heads that has a different ability. The moment you change the head, you change the role of the jack. And you have three to four weapon combinations that you can put in. So I don't know how many 
variations of a single jack you can do, but I guess that can be quite a lot. Uh, Another we can thing, ask Jay to uh, compute. Again, again. We can ask Jay to uh, do a <laughs> combination. It's a combination, actually. Not, uh, I was hoping not, Jay would uh, have <laughs> the number of possibilities that you can uh, create with, with one jack. Yeah, it's a combination of four to three to four. Anyway. For the, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, Jay is actually a resident uh, calculator. No, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's man. It's He's it's like, can you do my calculations in my head? Ah, okay. You have a 33% chance to quit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe he does get to you, R1, through your uh, War Machine games. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. So, uh, we also have degree of accuracy here, which which I found really interesting, meaning the better you hit the target, the higher the damage potential. So it's not just roll to hit and then roll to wound. Mm -hmm. Roll to hit, and if you really hit it hard, you get more dice for, for rolling to wound. So mm -hmm. things can die really quickly. Like a jack, uh, a war jack can be killed like in just one go, if you hit it really well, if it's out in the open, there's no cover, you can kill it outright. But the interesting thing about this game, and we go back to the summoning, is you can just bring it back. So there's no hard feelings if you bring out your big super jack, and then he just kills it outright. I'm yeah. sure there are hard feelings. I'm sure <laughs> there will be hard feelings. I doubt there will be hard feelings. <laughs> You're delayed a turn from, from using it because it has sort of a you know, summoning sickness because oh. it's the last thing you do in your turn. The last thing you do is you bring out the, the, mm -hmm. the unit and it's your mm -hmm. opponent's turn. So it does have a, a chance to do kill those units. Okay, so it's I go, you go, but it's limited in the sense that, uh, let's say it's a skirmish game, so three pulls rounds, three turns. Mm -hmm. uh, it's my first turn, I activate my two units, and then it's Jake's turn, he activates his two units, and then my two units, and then his two units. Once we reach the third turn, the pulse round ends. It doesn't matter if I still have a lot of units that are not activated, uh, the turn ends, and scoring is done. So you only have a limited amount of units to activate, depending on how many you have on the board. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not the game won't be long just because I have a lot of units because yeah, so like shape, like, shape, like uh, underworld right yes, where you have four activations regardless of how many oh, units here okay. exactly okay that's that's sold right. okay and the game is purely objective based uh, there is no uh, caster kill there is no tabling. There is no tabling. They place a mercy rule. I think that's a big factor for Jay. Because <laughs> okay. he, he has to kill everything. Yeah. <laughs> so that's actually a bonus for Jay because he gets to kill things many times. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good skin, good skin. He gets to kill things many times. So he, he looks at your big favorite war jack and he's going to say, I'm going to kill that five times. Papa tayin ko yan five times. So I have a question on the Jack customizability. So does that mean you're um encouraged to magnetize because of this this customizability? It, it, it's, it's, it's a big bonus because you can you can change. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, go ahead, go ahead. You can change your jack. Well, uh, actually, they got magnetized also my uh, my beasts for for hordes, and this is the first time I tried magnetizing. Some people what they do is they drill, and then they put the magnet. Me, I just you know what I'm just putting the magnet on the surface. I just paint over it, and you know what it. I don't I don't think it looks bad. I don't know for the others, but it doesn't look bad to me. So it's just a simple way to apply magnets. And then the materials, white metal, like um, private or old private or press or. What's the material that they use? Uh, I think it's something like Privateer Press. Uh, but although when I was building it, it spoke like infinity. So similar to. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Wow. It's actually very clean. And, very uh, clean and breakable. And breakable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, no, this is, uh, this is what you call this. Uh, 35 mm, so they are larger, not as, ah, not as hero fast. scale. And, and, hero and scale. they tend to be a little bit beefy. The units tend to be a little bit beefy. Is it made so of not. metal or plastic? 
Uh, I only have one plastic. Or what uh, is infinity uh, plastic? <laughs> No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking one. about like the make and model. Sometimes, like, Privateer Press before was all metal, right? Then they changed to... Yeah, but uh, so it's like Infinity yeah. according to John. So it's it's metal. Okay. It's metal, though I had one heavy war jack that I understand why, why they made the the body resin because it would be mm. very hard to, to build it because of the weight. And then you have to put the legs so it would be hard to do. So in, in that case, everything was metal except the... The, the torso of that that heavy jack which was resin okay which was resin although if you get to play the game you will have some favorites like there are some cortex that you will really say that you know that it's i will always use yeah. okay like the last scourge that i built i didn't magnetize the head anymore because i was sure that okay i, I will use this as until they I, change the rules <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> until, <laughs> until they change the rules <laughs> Then you're going to complain about the again. In case second ed, patay. So you just snap it off and then put it in. No, you will quit like evil. Evil. Will, yeah. it, 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 it will be shelved and I'll play Team Yankee for a while then, then get <laughs> Okay, so uh, here's here's also another thing. Nice. You don't need to buy the, the war jacks to get to get the parts. So they are, they have weapon packs. So uh, if you, if you're just sticking to one model of the warjack, but you want all the weapons available to you, so you'll be able to customize it. Then they also come with weapon packs. So that's one thing that is uh, sort of a bonus for me. So for example, this one has a shield. So if you want to have a jack that has two shields, so that it's very resilient, then then you can do that. What if I want like all of them to have the same loadout, right? So I'd need to buy multiple weapon packs, and that's yes. Yeah. But but for you, Jay, that's almost like nothing. That's a bit strange <laughs> for oh. you. <laughs> okay, so for the factions, uh, we have one that uh, came out looking more like knights or paladins. This is the Iron Star Alliance. So this is the human sort of high tech, uh, very high tech looking faction. So they have sleek design, clean cut armor. They have energy swords and shields if you do arm them because it's customizable. You, you may opt not to. And they have this sort of paladin and knight theme to them. So mm. these are not the good guys, okay, as, as much as they look like the good guys, paladins and all. But they are the expansionistic uh, faction that is taking over different planets and they're mining it for Ark because they're there after the Ark of the planet. So Ark is like the the source of uh, the life and energy so they're mining that and and that's them so they're like a corporation uh, you might um <laughs> with the war casters I, I think is that one is that guy there a war caster no you are you are the war caster you are the war caster and yeah. these are the weavers the one that you're referring to is is called the weavers so weavers come uh, come into play they have different abilities uh, like this one, this one in particular has the ability to well, not first of all, to channel your your furies, your sort of your spells, and this particular warcast, uh, sorry, weaver of Iron Star has the ability to transfer arc. So if you activate this jack, you put an arc on it, and then you want to activate this other jack next or during your next turn, and you don't have any arc left or any arc left uh, to to distribute, you can simply transfer that arc to that jack so it's uh, it puts some sort of efficiency into the army now uh, there's a misconception that just because it's knights it is a melee army okay uh that that that's a misconception you can actually build them to be to be very shooty like for example this uh unit that's coming out uh this here the paladin annihilators they are well they're very shooty. They ignore, they can ignore line of sight and cover. So you can have them behind the building shooting at stuff. So that is uh, very shooty, actually. So they, 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 they R1, behind, R1. The, yeah, behind the building, no line of sight, they're shooting at stuff. <laughs> do you need to have a rule for that, or can you just do that if you're R1? John. <laughs> There's a rule. You have to, to use the, the, uh, the art on them to do that. Okay. So you can right. and, and, uh, yeah so pal paladin Oceania, i guess they're shooty knights uh, 
Good call, yeah. Yeah, they can be, yeah, they, they sort of can be shooty knights. But they also have that type of Cador. Because if you put two shields, it becomes that Cador Jack. I forgot what you call it, but it becomes that really tough juggernaut that they can hold. Yeah, yeah that can hold the uh, clam jacks. Yeah. The clam jacks. Yeah. Actually, they call they do refer to the jacks here with the two shields also as uh, clam jacks. Hmm. Okay, so <laughs> they have here, that's the heavy. They have a big reference to ooh, that thing. <laughs> Okay. okay, so the faction has, uh, they're resilient and they're armored. That's one thing about them. Uh, their units have access to compound armor, which makes them resistant to blast. Plus one armor if you shoot them with blast. And blast is one of the best ways to get rid of squads here. So here, when you use a blast to try to get rid of their squads, it's actually harder because they are plus one armor. That brings their armor up, I believe, equal already to a warjack. So their squads are are considered excellent squads because of that. And in some scenarios, it's only squads that can hold objectives. So if you have a tough squad holding an objective and you want to shoot them off that objective, it might be very difficult for you. When you say blast, is it blast in terms of like a template or blast is a range attack? Blast is a range attack wherein you target okay. one model and the two nearest models are also affected. And squads okay. are only three models, and they have a coherency of two. So most likely, you will be hitting uh, the other squad members. Okay, but so yeah. What, Go ahead. Uh, what's the detriment if it's it when not within coherency? What happens? Um, well, there is no detriment actually. Yeah. Those are one of the rules that they that they didn't really put in anymore. So what happens? Let's say, for example, you hit this guy, and for some reason he is uh, slammed back. So it's out of coherency of the squad. When you activate the squad, he just goes back into coherency. He just snaps back. That's the same with the movement. If you move, you just move the leader, and then the two just... Uh, Star Wars go. Legion. Yes. Oh, Star Wars Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. It's... Star Wars Legion. Okay. That That's makes sense. That can be very... No, that starts with 8043, actually. Oh, ah, okay. I, I... Oh, yes, yes. 8043 as well. But no template. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So they are arc efficient. That's one thing about uh, them. Their jacks are sort of a toolbox. So you can configure them to, to deal with, with the, whatever situation. Uh, you can make them a specialist jack, but I think the, gen the best description would be is that they are gener they're all around. They're all around jacks. Uh, they they're have jacks of all trade. Jacks of all trades. <laughs> That's a good way of saying it. They're jacks of all, uh, all trades. Uh, they will be given now a gate launcher, which could make them very powerful. Although, Is that a node? They launch nodes? You the launch gates. Uh, because the, gate, uh, the way the sequence happens is that you play your activations, you play your ciphers, your cards, and then uh, at the very end is you, you bring down, uh, you summon your models, and then you bring down the gate. So with the gate uh, launcher, you get to launch a gate during your activation. That means when it gets to your uh, deployment, deploy. part, you can bring them out right yeah. away. So that, that, that sounds very cheaty, Jam. I think this is uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's for Jam. Oh, no. <laughs> I think it'll be best for you. Yeah, reroll and ignore it line of sight. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, that's our one. That's our one. <laughs> that's one thing I wanted to highlight here is because people think that they're 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 not shooty, but they do have access to rerolling guns and guns that do ignore line of sight. That's so me. <laughs> that's so me with uh, with basilisks and first rank fire, second rank fire. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And but the then again, you don't, you don't need the rule. rule. He just uh, does it naturally. Yes, it's base, uh, base arc ability to do those. Yeah, but anyway, is, there, is there a spotter needed for the ignore line of sight? Or it, it no. really is part of the rules? If it's, if it's in range, it's in range. Mm -hmm. okay. But you have to, like I said, you have to allot the arc. So you only have seven. Who do you give it to? Do you give it to your jack? Or do you, do you want to give it to this unit that can ignore line of sight? Because if you don't put it on them, they can't ignore line of sight. So and the reroll also requires an arc. Yes, it also requires an arc. I'm not sure if it's an arc 
or a spike because spike means you remove the arc and then they they reroll so I, i'll have to check that but it has definitely something to do with you placing the arc or using it okay and their solos are tend to be solid because their uh their weaver like i said can do that transferring of arc thing their next solo would be the paladin commander and the paladin commander it comes with a shield with a sword and his shoulder weapon is a blast weapon oh. so that, that that's not bad and the thing with this is it doesn't have movement okay so <laughs> the heavy armored guys we move forward we take it and then we hold it and then we I'm out, I'm out. Oh. Okay. no movement tricks and uh their support they don't have any support that does repairs so they're accountants if you're useless we we drop you okay we, we save oh. money and then we get rid of you so they don't have those units that that repair jacks or or help the squads okay uh, are, there name, name, are, there name, name, are there names are there names solos name solos or yes right now available for each faction there will be four four okay and then and then these name solos can come back after they die no no they no. can uh, okay. the unique models once killed they're they're out they're gone so like Lily, like Lily, <laughs> yeah, like, like Lily. Or uh, we're so sad about that. I now have to uh, Malipo, <laughs> Malipo. Okay, but in place of a uh, support guy, they're getting a paladin siege break Jesus. solo. But it's almost like a jack. It's got three sure. weapons. Nice. Okay, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Italian, and it's it's so it, it's it's a fighter. Okay, so it's okay. So it's a good-looking model. A lot of people. That yeah, right. very yeah. dynamic pose, though. Very dynamic pose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be afraid of it if it's like jumping, because uh, might have an ability of jump or flight, and that would make it very scary. <laughs> it's, it it kind of hold. Looks like it's holding its ground, which is pretty much mm -hmm. the, the faction thing. So looks yeah, like it's goes. idle somewhere it's like waiting for a bus <laughs> anyway i think that's the the, the pp design uh. <laughs> yeah actually well that if there's one thing that i can comment it's 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 like that it's still they still need to get to sort of that infinity level where mm -hmm. they have those dynamic poses but i i don't know maybe they might be playing safe with with, with yeah. their they won't want it toppling over i don't know but a dynamic pose wouldn't hurt in my opinion and that is it for our general overview and first impressions for Warcaster Neo Mechanica and the Iron Star Alliance faction. If you have any comments or corrections, please let us know. Join us in our next episode where we talk about the Marcher Worlds.